Hoffman, the author of VZOME. In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate 4D polytopes with VZOME. I'm not going to define what a 4D polytope is. Uh, for those who are curious and unfamiliar, I can highly recommend uh, a website by John Baez, who has a, a very nice series on polytopes and polyhedra and higher dimensions and symmetry and so forth. And I'll put a link below. So to go to uh, to generate a polytope in VZOME, you go to the Tools menu and you select Generate Polytope. This is all av also available as Command Option P on the Mac. This brings up a, s a small dialog where we choose our symmetry group and have some various other settings to do. By default, this is all set up to build what's called the Hyperdo or the 120 cell. So it simply generates it and renders it. So there's the 120 cell, the, the usual projection of the 120 cell, which is has a dodecahedral cell in the middle, so we call it a cell first projection. Let's look at some other polytopes we can generate. Well, let's start with what are these checkboxes for? Edge and render. I can actually add edges, four other kinds of edges, to the polytope I'm going to render using this H4 symmetry. Now, I should warn you that if I really do all four of these edges in the H4 group, this, this group has order 140, uh, sorry, 14,400. And so that's a lot of objects that are going to get rendered and it's going to be very slow and it might even uh, take up all the memory you have available for VZone. So I don't recommend rendering this object, certainly not with the balls rendered as so many polyhedra, uh, polygons rather. But let's take a subset and we'll do something that we can reasonably render. So this will just use two edges. Um, there's a name for this particular polytope. I don't know what it is off the top of, the, off the top of my head, but let's see what we get. It should be larger and more complex than the 120 cell have the same symmetries of course. Oh good, this is one of my favorites. In this one the cells are uh, truncated dodecahedra and tetrahedra. So this is a very nice looking object. It's a bit airy and all the tetrahedra make it very pretty. You can see it's taking me a little bit of time to render the object so it doesn't rotate particularly quickly. Uh, we, can, we can mitigate that problem if we use tiny connectors as the rendering shape. And now it should be a little bit more smooth to rotate. So I'm going to undo that and go back to my original shapes. And let's explore some other aspects of this dialog, the Generate Polytope dialog. What do these checkboxes do, the render checkboxes? Well, let's just turn one off and see what happens. So this should be the same object, but with less pieces of it rendered. And in fact, what you can see is the tetrahedron edges are still rendered. The rest of the edges are omitted. So this can be fun to play with, and uh, you can get lots of interesting views of these objects by subsetting the edges to render. Let's try some other symmetry groups. F4 is a beautiful group. This is the group of the 24 cell. So let's uh, go ahead and generate it that way. It essentially renders as a rhombic dodecahedron with some internal structure. If you look, you can figure out where all the octahedra are. 24 cell has 24 octahedra. So in fact, we can I can show you the vertices of one. So there's an octahedron. The 24 cell is also interesting in that is self-dual. So I can 
actually render it using the other edges, the opposite edges in the group, I do get a different projection here. Now I have a, uh, I guess this would be a face first projection, no, a cell first projection, I'm sorry. So there's a green octahedron in the center and some more flattened octahedra around it. So one of the flattened octahedra is bounded by these blue struts and the two green triangles. So this illustrates an interesting thing. There are many different projections of these same polytopes. Both this one and the last one I showed you are both 24 cells. In, tw in four dimensions, they have exactly the same vertices. We've simply projected that 24 cell in different directions. We can do this on purpose in VZOME as follows. What we're going to do is specify a quaternion to perform a rotation in four dimensions before we project to three dimensions. Now that sounds pretty complicated, but there's a very simple way to specify that quaternion. Normally a quaternion has four coordinate values. We have a way to specify three of those values, and it's very simple. We take a strut, we use it, we set it as the symmetry axis, and now that axis will be used as those three quaternion coordinates, and we get a very strange object which has been rotated in four dimensions before being projected. This rotation results in some uh, offsetting of the two copies that were previously overlapping in the center of the figure. Um, so now we're seeing we can actually count all 24 uh, of the octahedrus, octahedra cells in this object. The only problem, of course, is we've left the zone system and we now even have white struts in our object. There are some nicer projections of the 24 cell. So to find one, I'm going to momentarily turn on my frame label so I can orient in the right direction. And I think I'll do it this way. So now I know which, which way are the octahedral axes. Turn those off again. And I'm going to set an off-axis blue strut as my symmetry axis. And now if I generate the 24 cell, oops, that's not the one I'm looking for. I want the other end. So I'm going to do that end. There we go. This is a well-known projection of the 24 cell. It has three-fold symmetry. I can get rid of these. It has three-fold symmetry, a rotation around a yellow axis. And of course, the nice thing is it can be built uh, with normal red, yellow, and blue zone struts. And it shows there is no doubling. So it shows all that you can count all the octahedra. Uh, the only problem is there's some self-intersections here between yellow and red struts. So if you really want to build this, you'll end up interweaving them or putting a ball there or something. So you can, you can have lots of fun um, performing these quaternion rotations. So let's do another one, uh, one I'm particularly fond of. I'm, making a, I'm going to make uh, what I can call a green quaternion as my symmetry axis. And I'm just going to select all and hide it. Oops. And then generate, go back to the, uh, the 120 cell. And what I should get here is, rather than the original cell first projection, I should get a vertex first projection, which we can see means that there's a vertex at the center. Now this object, this, this projection, has octahedral symmetry. But in fact, that's due to the internal doubling. This center vertex is really two vertices, um, each one which is surrounded by a tetrahedral arrangement of yellow struts um, in four dimensions. But when you overlay those two with the doubling, you get simply eight yellow struts emanating. So what's fun is to, to take this object and try to remove half of the projection so you can actually see the dodecahedral cells much more nicely. 
So that's the, the uh, vertex first projection of the 120 cell. Obviously it's using some, some axes, some directions that don't exist in real zone. But um, you can actually go to Shapeways uh, and in the uh, VZome store you can find 3D printed versions of these extra struts, the lavender, the maroon, and the olive struts. They're, uh, they're sold in my Shapeways store with no markup, but they are still expensive just because of Shapeways um, pricing for the material. So there are lots of other symmetry groups supported. All the other 40 symmetry groups are supported. Um, F4 is interesting and, and, and rich. The richest one is definitely the H4 group. It's the group of the hyperdough. A4 is another interesting one. This is the group of the five cell. So let's actually just go ahead and build the biggest one we can. And I suspect we still have a green quaternion being applied here. Um, these objects are interesting because there are actually some projections that support fivefold symmetry. And you'll find an article about that on my webpage. So I encourage you to explore and to play around with the, the polyhedra generation and try leaving out edges, seeing what you get. You should get some subcomponents that will help you understand what's happening. Um, again, if you really want to know how these things are generated, that's a fairly complicated topic, but you can get some hints from reading John Baez's website, the, the entries about symmetry. And after that, you should go look at Donald Coxeter's um, Regular Polytopes, uh, a very famous book. That's it for now.